Welcome, everybody. My name is Dr. Eric Woodruff, and I'm here to present with to you about the Climate Reduction Manager Program, the Certification Program, and the 2011 Overview. We just updated the course, and I'm just going to be very, very brief. This is going to be a presentation that's less than five minutes, uh, but I'm very, very excited to give it to you and just a quick agenda what we'll be talking about, a quick introduction to the program, a little bit of some of the material, and then I'll talk about how to reserve your seat. Uh, as for me, I'm the chairman of the board of the Carbon Reduction Manager Program. It's been around since 07. Um, I've also been on the CEM board since 1999. It's a long time. And I'm currently the president of AEEE. I work with a lot of clients all over the world. In fact, in 10 days I'm going to South America, and two days after that we'll be going to Hong Kong. I uh, can't believe we're actually doing the eighth uh, carbon course in Hong Kong in two and a half years. So these are some of the pictures from you know, the field of this course around the world. Uh, we've had a lot of fun giving it, as you can see. It is uh, an overview of the course, if I were to describe it, <clears throat> is very simple. We, we try to orient people on some global trends on carbon accounting and GHG emissions. We talk about reduction strategies. We talk about using green power and alternative energy sources, and then carbon offsets, trading, and uh, credits, in, in a way. And at the same time, we also teach people how to do emissions accounting and how to do it properly, because if you don't do it properly, uh, you can't take advantage of all the market opportunities that exist for yourself. This subject relates to money in several ways. Number one, if you save energy, uh, you're going to be saving carbon. And I know a lot of uh, people with the Association of Energy Engineers and certified energy managers <coughs> are pretty good at saving energy. So this is a way to uh, not only save energy, save carbon, reduce costs, uh, direct savings there. Also, avoiding regulatory penalties. You may already be regulated by um, GHG emissions either monitoring or reductions. And also, uh, probably even more, even more important than a lot of these other ones are the, are the green image opportunities, which involve marketing, recruitment, and improving your employee morale. Plus, as a professional, becoming certified in the new field that's growing um, is a good thing and will be good for your career. Um, as I mentioned before, the EPA just announced a few days ago that they're going to be limiting power plant and refinery emissions. And that's going to be starting in the next couple of years. But they've already had regulations to uh, regulate, or at least, I'm sorry, monitor um, emissions from certain types of industry sectors, particularly large emitters in the United States. So we actually do have a way uh, carbon accounting requirements in the US. And if you're in certain states, like California, they're already moving towards bigger uh, programs, such as cap and trade. And this already exists in the Northeast as well. So all of this is starting to come to the United States. Um, we've been traveling all over the world in the last couple of years. This year we've got Jordan, South Africa as well. So places all over the world are looking at this material primarily because uh, this is a big issue to a lot of people, not just from <coughs> people that believe in global warming, but people who um, you know, have an interest in big companies that want to market to lots of people definitely want to appear more green. So. When you compare the numbers, the U.S. is quite a you know carbon footprint per person is quite substantially more, in fact, double than most countries. And uh, when you look at the developing countries to the far left there, uh, we are four times more than a lot of them. And the problem is that they're growing in the same way we are. And if they do, then our CO2 emissions in the atmosphere is going to get about seven times worse than it is today. And that's if there's no population growth. So this drives a lot of activity. There's a lot of interest on a, on a local level, on a personal level, on a consumer level. And you can see that, that companies are already being stereotyped uh, <laughs> based on how good or bad they're doing in their climate um, programs. I apologize. I have a little bit of a cough, but I'm trying to get this done before the end of the year. Anyway, um, <clears throat> the other fact of the matter is that a lot of young people coming out of college want to work for a company that is doing something good for the environment. <laughs> And in fact, there's already a lot of great projects out there in the world. If you didn't know this already, in the United States, this is voluntary projects that are out there to reduce carbon emissions in various types of mechanisms. And if you didn't know, this market already does exist on a volunteer basis. And it has been eaten through the recession. So that should tell you something about this market and the opportunities there. What we'll do in the class is we will show you how to do the carbon accounting, how to know what to measure. And Basically, this slide kind of boils down Kyoto into one slide and what you need to know, how to account for, what these new terms are that relate to this field. And this is a, a very strong extension of energy management, if you will. 
We'll also show you about um, multiplication factors that you should know, GWPs, that will, will help you get the most amount of emissions reduction by focusing on the gases that have the highest multiplication factors. And as you can see, some of these have very, very high multiplication factors, meaning that if you emit one ton of one of these refrigerants, that's like emitting, say, 1,300 tons of uh, CO2. So very significant ways to get there, and there are faster ways to uh, reduce a carbon footprint than just going, um, you know, standard practice of, of energy efficiency. So we'll show you all of that too. Uh, we'll show you the protocols and how to do this properly because if you don't do it properly, you won't get credit. We'll show you how to find the right emission factors for where you are and what industry you're in. Uh, again, very, very important. And we'll even show you some more cutting edge techniques about how to get emissions credits from um, uh, recycling and other scope three uh, reduction activities. They're not technically credits, but it is good for marketing. And we'll also show you uh, templates on things that I do as a carbon auditor and, and things, some best practices around the world on how to do this, um, templates that can help you save a lot of time and express things in a way that people can understand instead of saying, for example, you know, 466 metric tons, we'll show you how to convert all these things to barrels, oil, barrels of oil, gallons of uh, gasoline, acres of trees, etc. We show you very practical things, just like the Certified Energy Manager Program, another program that I teach. Um, we'll be showing you programs, uh, ways, and strategies that are very cost effective and which have the quickest payback. We'll show you cutting edge things that facilities and companies are doing to attract more employees and, and also <laughs> incredibly improve their sales. Um, we'll show you what cities are doing to, to you know, this example of San Francisco, mapping their solar installation. Um, neat things are going on all over the world and we want to share those best practices with you. Things that involve biomass boilers, things that involve membrane. Not that you're going to have to be an expert in these things, but you're going to be aware of different ways to reduce your carbon footprint. And methane recovery is a great example. Lots of opportunity in this country for that as there are in other places. And we will showcase some of the best solutions we've seen and some that we've, um, you know, featured, have been featured in different magazines. We'll talk about what companies are doing, you know, doing marketing that are, is just really showing their commitment to this topic and uh, a lot of great opportunities there. So in a nutshell, just to describe the course in a quick schedule way, this is what it looks like. It's a three-day course. We have the morning of the first day is, of course, you know, welcome and course outline, exam information if you want to become certified. Then you've got uh, global trends on GHGs, which is some of the slides that I've covered there, plus another 100 or so slides on different trends that may be applicable in your situation. And then we'll cover whether you are under legislative requirements already or with, with, if you're in the federal government, you definitely are, um, and other things that you need to be aware of, and then how, and how to get guidance, how to get guidance on how to do the emissions accounting and reporting that you may already have to do. Um, either way, whether, whether you're required or not, you have to have uh, a plan to follow. You have to have a guidance plan. If you're going to report, whether it's formally or informally, you should follow the guidance so you do it properly. That way, later down the road, if your company is regulated or your company wants to do it for marketing reasons or whatever, you'll have done it properly and you won't have to redo your whole thing. So that's important to know. We'll talk about you know the actual footprint measurements. And at the end of the first day, you're pretty much going to be doing a carbon audit. So very, very packed first day. Second day does not, not let up. We go into the actual strategy to reduce your carbon footprint because we want to make sure you can actually reduce it other than just account for it. And then at the end of the day, on uh, day two, we'll go through carbon offsets and credits, trading, uh, rec speculation, all these you know renewable energy credits, all of these new terms that may be uh, applicable in your career these days. We'll do a debrief on the homework exercise. We'll review some financial calculations, just like we do in the Certified Energy Manager Program, time value money, internal rate of return, net present value. And today we do a little bit in the morning on marketing, which is actually one of the most popular pieces of the class. Um, especially for engineers, and then we do a four-hour exam. It's very much like the CEM exam. So that's pretty much about the program, how to sign up. Um, we have very rare, very limited uh, opportunities this year in the United States because there's so much interest in this internationally. Uh, like I said, eighth time in Hong Kong in January. So, um, you know, you want to get reserve your seat, this is the place to go. When you go to aecenter.org, you, you can look for certifications. You'll pull down a menu for the... <laughs> CRM program, excuse me, and I hope I won't be sick when I'm teaching your course, or if it's not me, someone else will. But uh, anyway, 
that's a little bit about the program. I've enjoyed uh, trying to parlay this to you in, a, in as fast as I can, and uh, I wish you all the best, and maybe we'll see you in a class. Have a great day.